This is the first video in the compound interest uh, series and the formula that's written there a equals p times 1 plus r to the power t the letters all stand for the same thing they do with simple interest a is the accumulated amount p is the principal the amount you invest uh, the r is the interest rate it's an annual interest rate and the t is the time in years uh, notice that we're not calculating the interest, which is what we calculated in simple interest. We can calculate that um, after we calculate the accumulated interest, but usually we are interested more in the accumulated interest. Compound interest is really, in a way, much more common. If you invest money in a savings account, for instance, um, that'll be compound interest. Uh, so let's take a look at an example so we get a better understanding of what's going on. Let's just imagine that we have a principal of $100. So you could think of it as investing $100 into a savings account. And let's imagine that the rate is 10%. And remember, 10% usually in these formulas is represented as a decimal, 0 0.1. So we could write that as 0 0.10 alternately. So you know, imagine you were looking at the statement that your bank sends you uh, regarding your account. So in year one, You've invested $100, so that would be your principal. And then you earn a certain amount of interest. Now, this calculation really is exactly like the simple interest calculation. I equals PRT, so the principal times the rate times the time. But the time, in this case, is just a single year. So T is 1, so we don't really need to write it in. And so 100 times 0 0.10 is just 10. So you'd earn $10 worth of interest that first year. And therefore, at the end of the year, you would have the $100 that you started with, which is the principal, uh, plus the interest, which is the principal times the rate. And that would be 110. Now, in a simple interest sort of scenario, this would be identical. There'd, there'd be no difference at all. So in the case of annual compounding, which is what we're looking at here, there's no difference over the course of a year between compound uh, interest and simple interest. You would have 110 in your account at the end of the year if it were simple interest as well. The difference starts after the first year. So let's imagine now year two. So you haven't touched your account. So what the bank does is it gives you the interest of $10 at the end of the year, and that now becomes like principal in your account. So your principal is now the 100 you started with plus the 10 you earned, and so it's really almost the same as investing 110 at the beginning of the year. And so what's the interest going to be? Well, it's 110 times 0 0.10, which is 11. So you've earned $11 that second year. And you're going to add that to the 110 you started with, and you're going to have $121. Now, if this were just a simple interest scenario, let's say you had invested the money in Canada savings bonds, you're only in earning interest on that $100 you invested in the bond. The $10 that you received after the first year was given to you as a check. Now, you can do whatever you like with it. Theoretically, you could reinvest that, and then you would be creating a situation just like the compound interest. But in the sort of ordinary simple interest case, you'd only have $120. So you can see there's a difference there. And compounding interest, um, or compound interest, is going to yield, in the long run, uh, quite a bit higher sort of returns. Your, the value of your account is going to be more. Right now, it's only a dollar more, but we'll see that as we go, the difference becomes greater. So let's continue this for a couple of years. Let's say we have year three now. So now we're starting the year with 121. And the interest earned in that year is going to be 121 times 0 0.10, which is 12.1, or $12.10. And so our new balance at the end of the year is going to be $133.10, 133.1. Whereas, again, in simple interest, it would only be earning $10 every year, so 130 So now we're getting to a slightly bigger difference. And in year four, with the compound interest, we'd be starting with $133.10. And we would earn 133.1 times 
0.1 or 10 percent and that would be thirteen dollars and thirty one cents that would give us a total in our account of hundred and forty six dollars and forty one cents whereas again we'd only have hundred and forty in the simple interest and so you can see as the years go on it makes a huge difference to have uh, compounding versus just simple interest okay so is it the case that we have to do you know if we want to find out what's the value of our account after 10 years do we have to basically make a table like this and calculate the interest every year and figure out what the new starting balance is no there's a, a much much shorter way of doing it and we can see what's going on by taking a look at the uh, what I wrote at the top of the columns so that final balance was the principal plus the principal times the rate and we can take out or factor out the principal there and just write this as the principal times one plus the rate. Now what happens each year is we simply multiply by one plus the rate and so we can use the laws of exponents to write the second row as the principal times one plus the rate. When we multiply by one plus the rate again that's just uh, an exponent of two the third year would be the principal times one plus the rate to the power of three. The fourth year would be the principal times one plus the rate to the power of four. And so you can see that that exponent t just represents the number of years. So once again, this is annual compounding. And it's actually not the most common, the most common probably would be monthly compounding, but that's a topic for a future video. So in this case, annual compounding, uh, the formula is pretty straightforward. Um, and we could have gotten directly to that value, 146.41, just by saying, well, you know, the accumulated amount is the principle that we started with, 100, times 1 plus the rate, which was 0 0.10, to the power of 4, and when you punch this into your calculator, make sure you do what's in the brackets first. So the 1 plus 0.1, uh, you can do that in your head, obviously. It's just 1.1. Raise that to the power of 4, and then multiply the result by 100. You should get $146.41. Now, if we go any further, we're going to get more decimal places. So since we're dealing with money here, it makes perfect sense just to round this to the nearest penny. In other words, to two decimal places if we're representing it as dollars. So in this case, it comes out to exactly $146.41. But if you went any further, you'd, be, uh, you'd have to round it. So let's go through an example that does go a little bit further. Let's say we're trying to figure out the accumulated amount. And we start with a principal of $500. Our interest rate, let's just imagine it's a little bit lower in this example, 3.6%. Uh, but we're going to go for 10 years. You know, How much would we end up with after 10 years in our account if we just stuck in the $500 and left it there? So the formula looks like this. The accumulated amount is 500 times 1 plus 0 0.036 raised to the power of 10. And Again, you can do this in steps. You can do it all at once in your calculator. But if you're doing it on your calculator, make sure you do the 1 plus the 0 0.036 first. So that would be 1.036. Then, following the order of operations, you want to raise that amount to the power of 10. And I would not recommend writing this down because it's going to have a lot of decimal places. And you don't want to be just writing down a few of the decimal places. You want to leave it in your calculator. But this is what you would get you would get the 1.42428 and it goes on depending on how many decimal places your calculator shows and then you'd multiply what's on your screen by 500 and you'd get seven hundred and twelve dollars and if I round it to two decimal places in other words the nearest penny it would be 14 cents so seven hundred and twelve dollars and fourteen cents so I'll put a little dot above the equal sign there to mean it's just an approximation but it's to the nearest penny and so we started with $500. We ended up with $712.14 in our account. Now, 
This is a really a very useful formula and can be used for a lot of other things other than just um, putting money into an account. Um, without any modifications at all, you can use this to estimate the effects of inflation. So every year, for the most part, prices increase. And we could change this um, example to be one of trying to figure out what the price of something's going to be after 10 years, assuming the inflation rate is 3.6%. Uh, every year and if we have an item that's five hundred dollars today how much is it going to be in ten years and so the equations everything would be identical so after ten years of three point six percent inflation the price would be seven hundred and twelve dollars and fourteen cents it doesn't even have to be uh, money it could be anything that uh, grows at a rate of three point six percent so you know, maybe there's a video on YouTube, um, and every year, 3.6% more people watch it. So right now, 500 people a year watch the video. You know, in 10 years, assuming a growth rate of 3.6% per year, how many people are going to be watching it in 10 years? So it's really an identical calculation, and it can be uh, used for lots and lots of things. And we're going to see it will have even more uh, uses when we start looking at time periods that are not just years, but that will come in future videos.